And uh, this guy, Albert Pike, who was a Freemasonic god in America um, in the 1800s, sovereign grand commander, mother supreme council of the world, and all this stuff. They love their titles, these people. Pathetic. Um, and he wrote this. This was in a, 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 a book for Freemasons. Fictions are necessary to the people, and the truth becomes deadly to those who are not strong enough to contemplate it in all its brilliance. In fact, what can there be in common between the vile multitude and sublime wisdom? The truth must be kept secret, and the masses need a teaching proportional to their imperfect reason. That's what they do, is hoard the advanced knowledge and give us a fake version of reality. And... Brzezinski talks about this area. He's been talking about this area for a long time. He calls it Eurasia. And he says that to control the world, in effect, in simple terms, you need to control Eurasia, this area of land that includes key places like Afghanistan, Iran, um, the places around the Caspian Sea, this great uh, area of, of oil and gas reserves like Georgia where they've been having problems uh, recently, Pakistan and all these, this area which so much of the world is now focusing on um, is this area of the world going up into Russia and Brzezinski seems to have a morbid uh, genetic hatred of Russia for some reason um, and uh, that's what we're seeing Because there are plans to use Israel and use the Jewish people in Israel to um, uh, manifest a, a massive conflict which will lead to a third world war, which is what these guys are after. And Rahm Emanuel is the man who pulls the strings of uh, Barack Obama along with this guy, another Zionist, called David Axelrod. He was the guy that ran the whole of... Um, uh, masterminded the whole of the election campaign, both against Hillary Clinton and against John McCain, and it's Axelrod that is responsible for the words that appear on the teleprompter screens that Barack Obama reads. And he reads them so robot-like, in terms of uh, not having a thought in his head, that last week maybe 10 days ago, he thanked himself for inviting everybody to a reception because someone else's speech was on the teleprompter instead of his by mistake. <laughs> it was. It was when the Irish Prime Minister was there on St. Patrick's Day. There, people are starting to call him the teleprompter president. It's so bloody obvious. That's why he never looks ahead. It's right, left, right, left, because that's where the screens are. Hello, Barack, over here. Sorry, I'm reading. <laughs> and this is why you're getting uh, the, the policy of um, Obama saying Palestinian refugees belong to their own state and do not have a literal right to return to Israel. He's talking about the people who fled, 800,000 of them, um, at the time of the, the, uh, the bombing uh, uh, Israel into existence in 1948 and have never allowed to come back to their own land. People forget about this. White phosphorus, pepper bombing, the most crowded piece of land on the planet, the Gaza Strip. We don't target civilians, we just bomb where they live. <laughs> Unbelievable. We're just protecting ourselves. No, no, it's just slaughter. And now I'm hearing, oh, there's a lot of anti-Israeli sentiment. Do you know something? I have a way around that. Stop slaughtering innocent people from the sky. Okay? End of story. And it will go away. And this is important. This is important for, 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 for what's planned to come. We now have a situation in Israel where the extreme of the extreme has taken the reins of power. Uh, Benjamin Netanyahu, he, he's talked about, these are his words uh, summarized, he wants a violent reoccupation of Gaza to liquidate its elected government. And he pledges to thwart the Iranian threat once and for all. He's now got this guy, um, Lieberman, as his foreign minister, and this man's so far right, he topples over, right? Um, <laughs> And he's got uh, Barak as the defense minister in this new government. And he was defense minister that oversaw the uh, pepper bombing of the Gaza Strip. And this is um, uh, Martin Van Krefeld. He's a, a, a well-known historian in Israel. And this is what he said publicly. 
We possess several hundred atomic warheads and rockets and can launch them at targets in all directions, perhaps even at Rome. Most European capitals are targets for our air force. We have the capability to take the world down with us, and I can assure you that that will happen before Israel goes under. They have a policy have a policy of not saying if they've got nuclear weapons or they haven't. They just don't talk about it. And a guy called um, Mordecai Venunu, a wonderful Israeli man, um, went to jail for, I think it was 18 years, for exposing the fact publicly that they did have nuclear weapons. And now we've got this thing, oh, Iran's going to have nuclear weapons. What? The idea, and we're seeing it almost complete now, from the start was to drive out the Palestinian people, not uh, be at uh, one with them, not share power with them, not share the land with them. The green bits are Palestinian land over the period of time up to the year 2000, and it's gone on since then, as uh, illegal settlements are um, uh, put in um, Palestinian land. And one of the people that lives in an illegal settlement is Lieberman. As an Australian newspaper said this week, he must be the only foreign minister in the world who doesn't actually live within the borders of his own country. And the Middle East policy in Obama's administration is by uh, Bilderberg, uh, George Mitchell, Bilderberg, uh, Council on Foreign Relations, by the notorious uh, uh, little Kissinger, Richard Holbrook, who um, played a major part in breaking up the former Yugoslavia in, in wars, etc., so it could be absorbed into NATO and the uh, European Union, which it is being now. Um, um, he's Bilderberg Group, Council on Foreign Relations, Trilateral Commission. He's now in charge of Pakistan-Afghanistan policy. And this man, who is an arch-Zionist called Dennis Ross, he's now in charge of Iran policy. <laughs> um, what it's building to is a... Um, an effort, and Brzezinski is behind this among many others, to create a conflict out of the Middle East and in this area we're looking at to uh, bring about a third world war. And the third world war will be, and this was, was, was been written about um, in, 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 in the past, that there were going to be three world wars to bring this new world order into, into being. A, new wo- a, a war that would finish off the superpowers and bring the whole world under the... Uh, control of a world government, which will then dictate to every country. We have a responsibility to act. Bomb, 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 why bomb Iran? Why bomb, bomb, why bomb Iran? Bomb, 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 why bomb Iran? Bomb, 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 why bomb Iran? Bomb, 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 why bomb Iran? They got rockets in Russia, giant rabbit tanks, bomb Iran. Bomb, bomb, why bomb Iran? Why bomb, bomb, why bomb Iran? Why bomb, bomb, why bomb Iran? Why bomb, bomb, why bomb Iran?
which in sleep has fallen on you. Ye are many, they are few. When we figure that out, there goes their way of life.